Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover how to combine Harlow with jQuery and cover some of the basics of doing that. Starting as early as version 1.3 of Twine, which is when I started using it a few years ago, developers have wanted to include and use jQuery, which is a JavaScript library, with Twine. Many people have figured out many different ways of doing this to various degrees of success. Starting around version 1.4, however, jQuery was an optional library, and then in 2.0, which was a couple of years ago, simply became part of how Twine works. It's an underlying part of its systems and functionality. To use jQuery now, we just need to use script elements. For example, if I press a button here, you can see some code I wrote, and we'll go look at it here in just a few minutes. Using jQuery opens up the ability to use anything jQuery itself supports. Everything from game controllers to advanced animations to even web VR and everything in between. Anything that jQuery supports, any plugins it supports, which in this case are probably thousands over the years, um, you can use. Through writing JavaScript, Twine Story can be expanded to do all manner of advanced things like easier access to requesting data from different web services to all kinds of complex calculations. And in fact, here is some data that's been requested and posted here within a passage from another service. And as a little caveat here, this example cheats by using a fake server. However, we had to keep in mind that secure connections can only talk to secure connections and HTTP can't really talk to HTTPS as part of how requests go, but it's beyond the scope of this video at the moment. When using jQuery, we can unlock some pretty amazing things, basically anything JavaScript can do. Getting it to talk with Twine and Harlow in particular, however, can be tricky and sometimes overly complicated. Uh, variables are not shared, for example, and this is a major point to remember. Variables are not shared between the two. But expressions like watch var, for example, if this was on a single line, can be found and values extracted through looking for elements with a title attribute of the same name, which is somewhat of a complicated and, of course, as I said, overly complicated way of going about how to do this. Well, I have a live macro here counting up a single number every second. And as we see, it's been going on for a while. And if I click this, which is jQuery with some JavaScript, we can grab that value, relying on the fact that I happen to know how Harlow does things. But let's go look at the code for everything here, starting at the start passage. Now, as I said and repeated throughout this, we can use jQuery and any type of JavaScript we want, as long as it's contained within the script elements, within the script tags here. We have an opening tag and a closing tag, and notice how we have Harlow and Twine functionality around it. They have a link at the bottom, we have some text at the top. Within this, we're in fact using jQuery, and jQuery function calls start with a dollar sign, similar how value variables start with a dollar sign within Twine itself. And we're using a selector, which is part of some Java, or sort of part of some JavaScript functionality within jQuery, to keep track of key presses using an anonymous function right here wrapped up within this. And we say, okay, if the key is if a key is ever pressed on the keyboard, find the element with the ID log, which is this right here, and then replace its text with this. A button was pressed, which we saw in practice. When we pressed a button, we saw that replaced. Moving on to the second example, we see here the use of the AJAX functionality within jQuery. Now the actual function called getJSON is a wrapper that sits on top of the AJAX functionality that's, that's within jQuery and does a number of different things. We can say, okay, the format was JSON. We can go, okay, it's a promise of done. And then we can replace, like the last one, the element with the idea log, which is this right here, replace its text, replace its text with the body of the data that we got from the request. Which is a whole lot of complicated things of saying that if we want to, using jQuery, we can access other web services and interact with that within Twine. However, remember that we variables are not shared, so while this seems incredibly useful to go and request data from different services and interact with different ways, 
passing that data to Harlow and doing things with it in Twine are sometimes very complicated. And in fact, we'll see that in this last example here. So in this last example, I'm combining Harlow with some JavaScript using jQuery functionality. So we see the Harlow right here, wrapped up in the white space, collapsing. We see two different macros going on, the first of which sets the variable to the value of 1. Then we use the live macro to loop through every one second, in which case we're increasing the variable, increasing the v <laughs> value of the variable watch var, using the replace macro calling for the hook with the name tag change hook, which is this right here, this whole thing, and then replacing it with an expression of the value of the variable watch var. Now we can use that, as I'm doing down here in jQuery, to then look for that value, grab it, and then do something with it. Similar to the last example, or two examples back when we used key press, this one does click, looks for it, uses a function, and says, okay, go find an element whose name attribute is watch var which just happens to be how Harlow does things, grab its internal text, which in this case would be its value, and replace it for the element with the ID reflection, which is this up here. And each time we click on reflection, it replaces its own text with whatever watch file happens to be. And again, this is a sort of complicated way of, of going about trying to exchange uh, information between uh, Harlow and jQuery which, as I mentioned several times now, can often be very tricky and is overly complicated because there's sort of two different dialects of language that don't often talk together and probably shouldn't most of the time anyway. However, here are three different examples of using Harlow with jQuery, again with the caveat that variables are not shared and while jQuery gives us access to lots of functionality, it comes with its own problems as well as additional knowledge needed of how to write JavaScript on top of the knowledge needed uh, to know how Twine works and how to write things in Harlow. However, you can, like I, like I just showed here, use the two together, and these are three different examples of how to do that. Thanks for